This is where we used to come when we was kids in the 1980s. This is Filbert Street here. There used to be running battles down here on match days with opposing fans. It was like a beehive of trouble. It was really exciting and scary at the same time. And you get the police on horses and the truncheons and the crowd shouting and the abuse was, it was great. It was really, really exciting, especially as a teenager who had no other outlet to express themselves. And football, the casual scene, the football violence was a way to express ourselves. It's nostalgic, to be honest with you. I shouldn't glorify violence, don't get me wrong, but it's a different era. Come around this corner now, this is where the main ground used to be, now it's just a wasteland. This brings back so many fond memories. When I was at school, I supported Arsenal. I didn't know nothing about Leicester, because Leicester was like a really rubbish team at the time. But in 1983, I started following Leicester. I was only 17 years old then. And I started getting to the, the dark side of football. I mean, there was no racism and there was no colour and there was no you know, social status. If you dressed well and you were part of the lads, that's what counted. And that's what attracted me to this culture. I don't follow football violence anymore. I'm not a football hooligan anymore. I mean, that was a long, long time ago when I was a kid. The football violence scene now has morphed into these gangs like the DFLA, which all football lads joined together to voice their political opinions. Police officers arrived within eight minutes. Then. They had good intentions at first, normal football fans coming together to speak out against all forms of extremism, even I was interested in the group. But then when you have gangs like this, you'll get far right idiots latch onto it. And I was contacted by one of the lads from West Brom, he wanted me to join Democratic Football Lads Alliance, the DFLA. So I said, look, I'll join your group and I'll see what you're about. As I was watching down the Facebook page, I saw vile comments against Muslims against immigrants, you know, against MPs. Within a few weeks, I left straight away. I just knew what there was about. Yes, how you doing, bro? You good? I'm good, I'm good, thanks. How's things with you? My journey into being a hooligan, which was not something I planned on, But it all started when I was chased down Dunsford Road by some Spurs fans calling me, get the packy. So from that day on, I thought, all right, I'm going to get racist. And where can I find racist from my experiences at the football ground? So I started going from the age of about 15, 16, actively started becoming a, a hooligan, following Luton at home and away. Organisations like the DFLA, they really are about dividing communities. While football lads and lasses against fascism are about uniting the working class, this is a working class game and we shouldn't allow far right movements to come in and take over our clubs and sort of recruit from within our young people. There's one of our stickers here. The idea is really to promote to everyone that hit in town and sort of give send a message to the, anyone who's far right like the DFLA is that they're not welcome in this town. And I think you know we need to have this discourse where we sit around a table and discuss our opinions and discuss our grievances but they don't want to know they don't want to sit down with us. I was a football hooligan. I've got involved in scraps all over the world. And it was, for me, it was a way of life. I, I, I was brought up in care, and Tottenham was my family. Um, that's all I had. I've grown out of it, and I think um, the old football hooligans, we brought something together here to try and fight extremism, to try and fight racism, to try and fight for all the injustices that are happening in this country. You know, they make out that they're anti-every, you know, anti-extremism, but they're only anti-brown extremism or Muslim extremism, and they're only anti-brown uh, pedos or brown uh, grooming gangs. That's all they are. 
And then we'll go on to Oldham. And then we'll go on to all the other cities that this is affecting. You're now living in the greatest country in the world. Live by our rules or leave. Yes! Get up! Homelessness in this country is crazy. You can't walk into a city without seeing people sleeping rough everywhere. You know, that is extremism within itself. They've accused me of being a Nazi. I'm Jewish. That hurts me big time. And yeah, you, we, we've seen some of the pictures of people doing Nazi salutes. Can I just step in now? They put one up of a guy giving a, a Nazi salute, and when you look behind him, they're all Tommy Robinson banners. Yeah. There wasn't all... even at our march. The DFLA and Tom Rosen go hand in hand. And if they say they don't, they're lying because they've been on their demo, been on his demo, the free speech thing. They went to Hyde Park, you know, the uh, speaker's corner. They were there when Tom Robinson went there. They went to his BBC expose. They're all, every time he has something, they're there. Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson, nothing to do with the DFLA. I, I'm, I'm not a supporter of Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson d does his own thing. He had a march recently. The Polish division of DFLA were protecting Tom Robson. Why were they protecting Tom Robson if they weren't supporting him? At the end of the day, if you've got a minority of people in this country that are far right, then all of a sudden, every man and his dog who doesn't breathe the narrative of certain other groups is labelled racist. If you voted Brexit, you're a racist, you're a Nazi it legitimises the far right to go, oh, we've got a far right march tomorrow, let's jump on that. Yeah. Oh, there's a far right page, let's jump on that. We, we do have people on there that uh, have posted up racist comments and Islamophobic comments, but they've been removed. We, you can't stop it. You, you're going to get idiots on there that do that, you know, post that sort of stuff up. But as soon as we see it, they, they're, they're blocked. We do have a team of people that work tirelessly we're not paid to do this. We've all got full-time jobs, to be fair, and, and it, it's something that we monitor as best we can. There's one thing I say at the moment, and this is an Angela Davis saying, there's no such thing as being non-racist. In, the, in these times, you have to be an anti-racist. There's no, uh, oh, I'm not a racist, you know, I'm not racist, but no, you've got to be anti-racist because there's, uh, it's only racist and anti-racist. There's no middle ground anymore. Do you think that you've got anything in common with the guys at the DFLA? The thing we've got in common with the DFLA is the, clo the clothes. I think that's about it, really. And love of football. Make sure you've got the badge in, yeah? Third. It's the 30th anniversary of Stone Island. The F DFLA was so jealous of this jacket, they'll hate it. <laughs> Don't zoom in on the badge, though, but just make sure they see it.